Welcome to this third video in the series called The Call of Jesus. In this series I talk about my new book and want to give you a taste of it, give you some teaching and so on. And I actually have the new book here. It's the first time I got a copy myself. And now we start to see response. We start to get response from people who have read the book and, and how it's changed their life. One of the responses I want to read here, one person, she wrote that this is for every Christian. And the person wrote this on Amazon. Have you ever read your Bible and longed for more? Long to walk as Jesus did and see what Jesus saw. What Torben writes in this book is the answer to what is missing in what has become the normal Christian life. I have ached in my soul for more as long as I can remember. I will never be the same after reading this book. This is the very simple gospel written in a way that everyone can understand it. This is a must read for every Christian. So this is a beautiful word uh, one person wrote on Amazon and I want to say, have you longed for more? Have you longed to live the life we read about in the book of Acts? Then I really believe that this book and this video series could be something for you. And I really encourage you to see the whole series. They will come out like every third or second day and, and get the book if you can do that. On to now we have looked at how important it is that we don't build on our church culture. We need to build on Christ and his word. It's Christ first and then mission according to him. And then we end up with church. Not church first and then we put mission inside that church box so we forget Christ. And that is some of the things I've been talking about onto now. We also looked a little that the Bible says that we should obey Jesus as the first disciples did. And the truth is that our focus has changed. Our way of doing church has changed. But Jesus is forever the same. And it's really time that you and me, we take the time to stop doing what we are doing. And then look at Jesus and what he has called us to do. This chapter we are going to look at here is called Being the Good Ground. And I want to start with reading something for my book. Jesus' call to follow him is for everyone. But the sad truth is, not many are willing to take up the cross and pay the price to follow him. To follow Jesus is a calling where you need to be willing to pay a high price. This is something we do not often like to talk about, less alone do. But those who are willing to pay the price, Yes, this is so true. We don't like to talk about it. We don't like to think about it. We don't like to talk about it. We don't like to talk about that we need to pay a price to follow Jesus. It costs everything to follow Jesus. And it's something we need to talk about. You need to be aware about it and be willing to pay the price. Otherwise, you will not be able to do what Jesus will call you to do. And when we talk about Jesus' call, I want to say again that this is for everyone. His call is for all of us. If you are old, if you are young, if you are man, if you are woman, Jesus has called you. But as we looked at before, the truth is everyone is called, but it's only a few who are actually willing to take up the cross and pay the price to follow him. If we take and look at the Bible, there's two people in the Bible you can see very clear that Jesus called. There's many people, but there's two people I want to talk about. One person Jesus called was Matthew. He was a tax collector, and you can read about that in Matthew 9. Jesus, he walked and he saw him and he called him, and right away, Matthew left everything behind and followed Jesus. And Jesus, he used him mighty. Jesus really used Matthew in an amazing way. And we can, he even was one of the ones who wrote the Gospels. Matthew was used by God. Why? Jesus called him and he was willing and he said yes to Jesus' call. But in Matthew 19, you read about another man, the rich young ruler. Jesus also called him with the same call as he called Matthew, come and follow me. 
But the rich young ruler, he was not willing to pay the price and he actually ended up going away very sad. And we don't hear more about him. So here we have two people in the Bible. We have Matthew and we have the rich young ruler. Both of them was called, but only one of them was willing to leave everything behind and follow Jesus. And that person experienced an amazing life with Jesus. That person experienced so many things. God used him mighty. And the other person, he left sad. And we don't hear more about him. Who of those two are you? Who are you? Because the call Jesus had given was the same, but the response was different. And this is what you have to understand if we look at the call of Jesus, I'm going to go through in this video series and in my book, that that call to follow Jesus is the same for all of us. But the response people give is different from person to person. And you need to choose before we move on. And look at what it is Jesus is saying. You need to choose who you are, if you are like Matthew or if you are like the rich young ruler. Another place where it becomes also clear is in Mark chapter 4. In Mark chapter 4 we read the parable about the sower. And in this parable we see that there was a farmer, he went out to sow his seed. The seed is the word of God. Or let's say it like this, the seed is the call of Jesus, the call Jesus had given. But the call fall in four different grounds and gave four different results. And we will look a little at it. The first ground we read about, this is the ground where the seed fall on the side of the road and the bird came right away and devoured it. There are those people who hear the word, but it do not go down in their heart. So Satan come right away and steal what has been sown in their heart. And I don't know if this is you. Maybe you read this, my book. Maybe you see this video series. Maybe you look at what Jesus is saying to you, but it will just go in one ear and out the next. And one day you are going to stand in front of him and you have not been faithful. You have not received him. That is the truth. The second ground we read about in, in Mark uh, 4 is where the ground fall on the, uh, the seed fall on the stony ground and there is not a lot of moisture, earth, so it come up quickly, but then the sun come and scorch it, so it visa and die. There Jesus is talking about that this is those people who hear the word and receive it, but then when persecution set in, they fall away. They fall away because the word have not gone deep enough in their hearts. So when persecution comes, they fall away because they are not true, truly willing to pay the price to follow Jesus. I don't know if that is you. Many people will receive, listen to the call of Jesus and, and his words and then say, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to obey you, Jesus. Jesus, I want to obey you. But you know, as soon as you start to obey Christ, his words, you experience persecution. You know, you can be in church your whole life without experience persecution. But I promise you, in that moment you start to heal the sick, cast out demons, and especially lead people to Christ, Satan, he hated. You will have an enemy and you experience great, great persecution. And what happened? Many people fall away when that happened. So before you look at the call Jesus has given you and before you really move on, you need to stop up and, and say to yourself, what ground am I? Am I ground number two? Will I just fall away and give up as soon as it becomes hard? Or will I keep going no matter what? It's your choice, it's your decision. The third ground she's are talking about in, in, in Mark 4 is in verse 7, where he talked about the seed fell amongst the thorns, and the thorns, thorns grow up together with the seed and quench the fruit, quench it so it did not bear fruit. The third ground Jesus is talking about here is the 
the thing that is growing up around us, and that is the worries of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the longing for other things. The thing is that many people hear the word of God, hear the call Jesus is giving, but are like the, the rich young ruler. They hear the word and say, Jesus, I want to follow you. But what happened? There are so many things around them, like the deceitfulness of riches, the worries and longing for other things. And all of those things come and end up stealing that call. They are like the rich young ruler who say, Jesus, I want to follow you. Or say, Jesus, what can I do to have eternal life? And then he left sad. But thankfully, <laughs> there is also those people who are the fourth ground, the good ground, who bear a lot of fruit. And those people do not only bear a little fruit, but a lot of fruit. We are talking about 30, 60 or 100 fold. I will ask you, who are you? Are you Matthew? Or are you the rich young ruler? Who are you of those two? What ground are you of those four? Are you ground number one who just hear the call of Jesus but never responds to it? Are you ground number two who said, Jesus, I want to follow you? But then persecution set in and you fall away right away because you are not willing to pay the price. Or are you like ground number three, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to follow you. I want to see good ground. But you also want so many other things in your life. And you are deceived by the deceitfulness of riches and all other things around you. And therefore you don't bear fruit or worries. Or are you the good ground who bear a lot of fruit? And what we need to understand, and it's not something we talk a lot about in the church, but we need to really understand that it's your choice. It's not my choice, my life, my choice. Your life, your choice. You need to choose what ground you want to be. And right now, we are living in a time where the world is getting crazy. Everything is shaking. The virus, economy, our freedom. But that is actually not bad for the church. That is actually good. Why? Because a time like this reveals what ground we are. A time like this reveals what is inside a person. And if we look at the church today, and just be honest, most people in the church today are ground two and three. But they don't see their two and three before persecution really set in, and before the economy are being shaken, and fears and worries come. And then it reveals what ground they are. It reveals that many of those people have not really be willing to suffer and pay the price it costs to follow Jesus. So as soon as persecution comes, they start to compromise and for the sake of peace. Or as soon as persecution comes, oh, they, they start to, to, to deny Christ and they're actually denying Christ in the end. No, 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 we, we don't need to obey him like that. Or as soon as the economy being shaken, like they're ground number three, they say, yes, Jesus, I want to follow you. But then it costs everything to follow him and worries and longing for other things. And it reveals who they are, that they are not the good crown. Where are you? Who are you? I really believe and hope that, that the book, The Call of Jesus, and this video series can, can help you. I really believe when we look at Luke chapter 10, that it will give you revelation what it is Jesus has called you to. But it's only those who take his words and are willing and obey it who will bear a lot of fruit. So some of you, sad to say, some of you will hear this teaching. Some of you will hear what Jesus has said and it will go in one ear and out the next. <laughs> some of you will fall away. Some of you do other things. So please stop and decide, check yourself and decide, I want to obey Jesus no matter what. 
I want to be his disciple. I want to be like Matthew. I want to be willing to take up my cross. I want to follow him no matter what. And if you say like that, if you think like that, if you are willing, you will like Matthew experience an amazing life where God will use you and you'll be able to change many people's life and you stand in front of Jesus as a faith, good and faithful servant one day who have been faithful in the small things. But if not, Jesus will ask you, why do you call me Lord, Lord, if you don't do what I say? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, if you do not do what I say? What we need to understand also is that a disciple is really somebody who needs to deny himself and take up the cross and follow him. It's, it's, and Jesus said that, and the one who holds on to his life is going to lose it, but the, life, the one who lay his life down for my sake are going to win it. So it's an amazing time we are living in. I'm very excited. Yes, we are being shaken, but it's time to stop up. It's time to examine ourselves. It's time to see where we are. Are we like Matthew? Or are we like the rich young ruler? It's time to see what ground we are. Are we ground one, two, three, or four? Are we the good ground who bear a lot of fruit? I went up saying that uh, when we one and a half year ago left Denmark because of persecution, God spoke to us and said that, Torben, the church are not ready. You need to help the church. The church are not ready. And I knew that persecution would come and, and it would be a hard time for the church, but I did not know it would go so fast. I did not know that, that the, the shaking will come so fast. So I'm at the same time with everything like you are shocked what is happening in the world today. I'm excited what is happening in the world today. Why? Because Jesus are building his church. Jesus are building his church. Jesus are calling people back to him and his word. So I hope you will follow in this teaching when I move on in the next lesson where we are going to go deeper into Luke chapter 10. I hope if you haven't done it, get my book, read it. You can get it for free if you write to Large for Information if you don't have the money to buy it on Amazon. And let's take this journey together where we together step by step by step by step go into what it is Jesus is saying. And we are willing to pay the price and willing to take up our cross and willing to obey him. And we do this together. And then together we are going to see amazing fruit like we read in the book of Acts. God bless you. See you next time. Bye.